I'm Ian Bateman. I'm a professor of environmental economics at the University of Exeter and a member of the Natural Capital Committee. I want to talk to you about the committee's work on bringing the importance of place into decision making. The environment is not flat. That's obviously true in a geographic sense, as this wonderful picture demonstrates, but also the environment uh, is very variable in terms of the type and extent of natural capital services that it provides across space. Some areas are fabulous for farming. Others deliver high quality water. Others provide important climate services or habitat for biodiversity. If we ignore this, if we continue to craft policy which treats all areas uh, similarly, then we waste the precious resources that are available to improve the environment. And I want to illustrate this through some work which was published in uh, one of the uh, committee's state of natural capital report. We need to plant more forestry in the UK. However, if we do this in the usual way, by simply leaving it to the market, throwing some money out there in, some, in terms of subsidy, then that money will be taken up according to the foregone agricultural values involved. It won't be taken up according to the non-market environmental benefits that could be generated. Such an approach is likely to lead to afforestation in the areas indicated here. And this rep will represent very bad value for money for the UK. These areas include upland peatlands, where if they're planted with trees, they will actually uh, emit more greenhouse gases than are stored. Often these are fragile environments, important habitats for biodiversity, which could actually be disrupted by such land use change. Also, these areas are typically remote and don't deliver anything in terms of recreational opportunities for people. Indeed, when we look at the costs and benefits of such a strategy, we find that it's not even worthwhile undertaking uh, such, um, uh, such expenditure. If instead we adopt a natural capital approach, such as that developed in collaboration between the committee and HM Treasury, now incorporated within the Treasury's Green Book guidelines on public spending, then we will incorporate all of the uh, uh, both market and non-market environmental values uh, that such a scheme would generate. Many of these we can value, and those that we can't, we can safeguard by uh, imposing rules designed to uh, sustain natural capital and stop it being further degraded. If we follow such rules, we plant in very different places. These places deliver excellent value in terms of generating recreation, water quality, greenhouse gas benefits, and of course, safeguarding biodiversity. And when we apply those green, uh, those green book rules to assess the value for money, we find that it's excellent and fully justifies this level of investment. The committee have also worked with uh, DEFRA to help develop valuation tools to support natural capital decision making. And these allow decision makers to dig down into those variations in environmental values between different locations, allowing them to shape policy, to generate best value for money and also best outcomes for both people and the environment. There's still work to be done. These tools need to be developed further, but most importantly, they need to be used.